All right, now you get stalagmites up here going nice. So you know what this hell needs? Other people. That's right. Come on, we're gonna come down here. Soul of the damned, right there, down in the flames. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna add another little soul right next to him, cause everyone needs a friend. Let the wind pass because the wind is very loud today. I really wish all of the reds and the oranges were not combining with my blacks. I have no idea how Bob Ross layers shit so good. He just paints over other paint and it doesn't, like, fuck up at all. I don't know how he does it. It's, it's fucking magic. You can mix this up. You can add as many souls as you like. What do you think this guy's sin was? What do you think he got sent to hell? You know? I'm trying to fill it out, you know? I don't, I don't want... I don't want to have too much empty space here. Because, you know... What are all these flames for if we don't got some souls down there? And let's, uh... Let's put one last guy right over here. And just like that, you get yourself a nice little hellscape full of little damn souls. And I think that's beautiful. Now let's go watch a satanic Halloween movie. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided. These movies to watch. Today's episode, Hack a Lantern. <sighs> Hello, Internet. I'm so glad you could join me today for the final installment of Metalween, because today we're taking a look at a film very near and dear to my heart Hack a Lantern. Hack a Lantern, which bears the suspicious alternate title Halloween Night, is a 1988 straight to video movie from Indian born director Jag Mundra. Although it was written by two Americans, Dave Eisenstark and Carlo Robinson, it stars TV actor Gregory Scott Cummings, as well as High Pike, known for his roles in Blade Runner and Dolomite, in his last appearance before semi retiring. And I gotta say, I really appreciate this Blu-ray giving us an FBI warning over a satanic ritual. Isn't it great how many metal-related horror movies are set on Halloween? This is Hack-A-Lantern. The movie opens on Tommy, a young boy being visited by his grandfather on Halloween, who has a special gift for him because he's very special. See, this movie's kind of like if Hereditary was a no-budget 80s slasher. And we meet Tommy's incredibly neglectful mother. That's enough, Tommy. I told you, let your father do the jack-o'-lantern later. You're gonna cut yourself. Take the knife out of the child's hand, woman. You are the adult here. Is it any surprise her kids do stuff like this? Trick or treat, give me all your candy or I'll blow your head off. Roger, would you learn how to talk nicely to your sister? Big Ben, you're dead. Looks like Tommy's brother Roger is obsessed with violence and has no respect for women. I wonder what he'll be when he grows up. Of course, Tommy cuts himself because he's a child with a knife, but he says he likes the taste of it. Grandpa says it's good for me. Grandpa? When did you see Grandpa, Tommy? Oh yeah, Grandpa's bad news, but he and Tommy have a secret special relationship. So Tommy's dad confronts Grandpa, who's unfortunately in the middle of a satanic ritual, meaning Dad is getting axed. And we find the gift given to Tommy is a pentagram necklace, which he keeps into adulthood. This Halloween is special, as it's the Halloween Tommy gets initiated into Grandpa's coven. And Grandpa does the sign of the horns with his thumb out. Which you do see sometimes Gene Simmons would do this, so uh, if he says he invented metal horns, he's full of shit. But uh, usually you do it with the thumb in, because if you do it with the thumb out, it becomes, I love you. But they do have a sign of the horns handshake. That's neat. Tommy's mom watches from the window and then teleports in front of Grandpa's car. Well, I think I figured out who the killer is. She clearly has slasher villain powers. 
Also, there's the very strong implication that Tommy is mom and grandpa's incest baby, which, uh, gross. I cannot neglect to mention Vera, Tommy and Roger's sister, who is introduced as an adult in a bath scene. Taking notes from Rocktober blood, I see. Her friend replaces her loofah with a fake spider, and she can't just feel that it's a fake spider. She has to look at it. Honestly, I'd be way more upset about someone walking in on me bathing than this lame spider prank. My favorite day of the year! I'm sorry, what? My favorite day of the year! va da 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 weird You gonna wash all the bubbles off, or no, just gonna walk around soapy? Okay. Oh, and Roger's a cop. Who could have seen that coming? Tommy, can you hear me? I'm, I'm sorry, is this a reference to the Who's Tommy? Tommy, can you hear me? There's a lot of rock and metal references in this movie, but that's such a weirdly specific thing to reference, especially considering the delivery just sounds nothing like it at all. Maybe the writers intended it as a reference and the director just didn't get it, but I think it's just as likely a complete coincidence. So Tommy puts on his headphones and daydreams a rock music video. Yeah, you remember when I said the director of this was Indian? Well, this is that Bollywood influence coming through. It's just an entire musical number that adds nothing to the plot. Although, if Bollywood movies had more metal music in them, I might watch more Bollywood movies. And there is some distinctly Indian imagery in this video. A sadly underrepresented aesthetic in metal, I gotta say. Cool fact, because Halloween was not popular in India, the director of this movie didn't actually know what Halloween was until he saw the John Carpenter movie. And with no frame of reference, he decided the sound of Halloween was metal. Oh, I guess I should talk about the quality of the song. It's fine. Far from the worst thing I've heard in one of these metal ween movies. Although, it's being performed by a real band, and I kind of see why they didn't go anywhere after this. And the video ends with the voodoo Hindu goddess cutting off Tommy's head with a pitchfork. Which is such an important moment, they had to put it on the cover. This woman is not in the rest of the movie. She is purely a figment of Tommy's imagination. And yet, here she is, rocking the cover. Next, we meet Nora, the hottest chick in town, drawing several onlookers, including the town lesbian, apparently. It was the 80s. You were only allowed to have one gay person per town. Nora's a friend of Tommy's with a pentagram ass tattoo, but Grandpa says he needs to be... Pure for tonight. Why would I join a satanic cult if I had to stay pure? That is the opposite of why people join satanic cults. Vera's friend Beth flirts with Roger. It is as awkward as you expect. I really do work for the sheriff's office. And they make us wear these outfits, especially when we're on duty. So you're on duty now? I work tonight. I work at the party. Oh, so we'll see more of each other. Meanwhile, Tommy is exercising like he's fucking Rambo when Roger comes to confront him about his behavior. Why don't you do something meaningful with your life? Fuck off, cop! And we get a good look around Tommy's room to see his dead-end, drive-in, Season of the Witch, and Elvira posters. Satanists have the best taste. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. He's also got a satanic shrine in his closet. Christ, Tommy. I kinda gotta side with Roger here. You've got lit, unattended candles next to a loose piece of fabric. This is a fucking fire hazard. Mom visits Dad's grave, which reveals something odd. They establish it's been 13 years since his death, and his tombstone says 1968. Which means despite releasing in 1988, this film is set in 1981. Also, the A and the I have worn off in a mere 13 years. This must be a pretty cheap tombstone. Does he look as good out of his uniform? Oh, I hope this isn't going to turn into something X-rated or illegal. I do. I hope it does. Thank you, Beth. More evidence mom is the killer. She gets a creepy POV shot. I just came from your father's grave. I think you should pay him your respects today. You, you could have just gone together. You, you live in the same house. 
Meanwhile, Nora goes to take a shower. I'm sure she'll be fine. Oh, oh, I guess she is. But then after she's out of the shower, a cloaked masked figure shows up. The masked man pulls out a rake and she just lays there silently as he kills her. You're not gonna run or scream or try to stop them in any way? Grandpa shows up to the Halloween dance decoration committee to say hi to Vera and mostly just to make him seem less likely as a candidate for the killer. And hey, Roger shows up too. Vera, who was previously not okay with Beth and her brother dating, is now trying to get them together. And I guess it works because they walk out of the dance hall holding hands and being way too friendly for people who met earlier that day. Wish I could say the same about her other brother, who's a total cock block and throws her boyfriend out for trying to fuck her. Are Satanists just prudes? I thought sex was a huge thing to them. And then Tommy pulls out the devil mask from earlier and a switchblade, seemingly confirming he's the killer. But the boyfriend gets killed with a shovel in a freshly dug grave, which is convenient. And mom's covered in dirt, further throwing suspicion on her, but like... At this point, they've put way too much suspicion on Tommy for us to believe it's anyone else, even though, spoilers, it's not Tommy. That'd be too obvious. Come nightfall, Roger sees something suspicious in the graveyard. All right, freeze! Trick or treat! Nuh-uh, these kids are up to something. They got a gun pulled on them, and they're just like, trick or treat in unison. In a graveyard. Why would they be trick or treating in a graveyard? They're acting too innocent. Something's up. What were you kids doing here by the grave? We dropped all the candy, that's all. Uh-huh. And how did the candy get in the graveyard, you little shit? Well, go along now, kids. This guy was gonna shoot you. Don't worry, kids. The nice cop was just gonna shoot you. Anyways, this cop decides to fuck on a grave. Kinky. But also definitely illegal. Oh, looks like they got strippers at this Halloween dance. I mean, it should be a thing. But it definitely isn't. Meanwhile, the lamest dude at the party showed up in normal clothes and a skull mask. And he just launches into a fucking stand-up bit. Oh boy, you know, she reminded me of one of those girls from the girly magazine. Did you ever see those girls in the girly... Like, my favorite part in there is, is the naked girl. Yeah, this is just an actual stand-up comedian who they just had in the movie. A, a turkey. Three days before Thanksgiving in the woods. He's scared. He just got away. He's a pet. He doesn't know what's going on. He looks at the hunters. You know, with this act, right outside a random building is exactly where this guy should be performing. Vera and Beth have decided to go as g girls in dresses. But while making a trip through the graveyard, Vera finds her boyfriend's body in a pile of dirt above ground, even though he was clearly pretty deep in it when he died. Vera goes to confront Tommy about the death during his initiation, which is a bad idea. And this next scene feels... familiar? Tommy, please! You can't do this! Do it, Tommy! I shouldn't. Do it. Oh, I'm sure George Lucas was a huge fan of Hack-A-Lantern. But Tommy frees her, meaning he's out of the cult. Meanwhile, at the dance... Yeah, I don't know, man. I think snake charming is pretty metal. I think Indian culture and metal need a little more crossover, you know? One of you, my geisha? But thank you. Buzz off, buddy. Yeah, town lesbian. The mass killer shows up and kills someone at the dance, and Vera and Beth kinda dismiss it. Some people just can't handle their punch. No, this look is heroin overdose at the very least. But they also got Beth. Come on, Beth. Get out of the closet. That girl in the kimono wants to dance with you. Grandpa shows up and gets in a fight with the killer. So I guess it can't be Grandpa either. Even though he did kill Dad at the beginning of the movie and wanted to kill Vera. So, uh, not totally innocent. I guess it's okay that he bites it. And the killer wanders through the woods for a long time. Oh, just tell us who it is, you fucking dick. No, it was the mom. That wasn't a joke. She totally has slasher villain powers. 
Not sure I understand her motivation. I mean, killing Tommy's unscrupulous friend and Vera's boyfriend makes sense. But who was this woman? Why did she have to die? Was she trying to frame Grandpa or Tommy? If you're gonna start killing people, why not start with Grandpa? Anyways, she dies of a bullet wound, and guess what? Roger's running the satanic cult now, and we get some metal to play us out. We welcome the night. Kill the devil! And that's Hack a Lantern. Fuck yeah! I hate how much satanic horror films wimp out on showing us the actual satanic stuff, but this movie delivers. I am a sucker for satanic antics, and this movie's got them in droves. Combine that with some truly bizarre decisions that start to turn the film into a satanic metal Bollywood film, and you've got the recipe for a perfect Halloween movie. Could it be better? Yes. But this is exactly my shit. It is beautiful, and I love it. If you want to hear about another Halloween movie about a killer in a Satan mask, there's Satan's Little Helper. Uh, and until next time, have yourselves a happy little metal ween, y'all. tend to warm up real quick. This Bob Ross bit was entirely too long, so I, I think I'm gonna cut it down for the video, and then I'm just gonna upload the rest of it as a separate video, so look forward to that.